All right, everybody. So I, I know this may be a little weird, a little, a little bit of an adjustment, um, but things shouldn't be that much different. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to start with state constitutions. Um, this video shouldn't be too incredibly long. Please make sure you check Google Classroom for the accompanying assignments with this video. So today we're going to be discussing state constitutions, mainly why they exist and how they differ from the federal constitutions uh, and why they're so important, particularly uh, with the restrictions and things that are being put in place in society now, um, you'll sort of understand why state constitutions exist more so than you would have any other time. Um, so let's start with the importance here. So the importance of the, uh, the state constitution cannot be understated. Um, so state constitutions create the structure of the state government. They tell us who has which power. Uh, in Ohio, we have the General Assembly, which is made up of the Ohio Senate, which has 33 members. The Ohio House, which has 66 members for a total of 99. We also have the, the governor and lieutenant governor, who are first and second in command of the executive branch. And then we also have the Ohio Supreme Court. So we all, also have separation of powers, um, just like the federal government. The executive branch has checks and balances on the legislative, which have checks and balances on the uh, judicial branch. The terms and method of election are a little bit different. Instead of the Supreme Court being appointed by the president, like it is in the federal court, they are elected by the citizens. Um, and the same goes for most of the other reps. Um, the biggest difference is almost everyone serves a four-year term in Ohio politics. General Assembly, governor, um, and, and justices mostly serve four-year terms. Uh, whereas the federal government, it's two years for the House, six years for the Senate, four years for the president, uh, and so on. State constitutions also help us define local government powers, uh, what they can and can't do. For the most part, local governments uh, have regulations and, and laws that are in excess of the federal law, which is and, uh, and then state laws, which are in excess of federal laws. This includes county laws. Uh, there are things in Ohio called dry counties where you cannot purchase alcohol in those counties. Uh, there are townships, which are like township trustees. They usually take care of roads and things like that. Municipalities would be like cities. Um, where there are city governments and, and things of that nature. Local governments and state governments generally uh, are able to regulate the ways they function. Uh, how do they raise money? How do they spend money? So are you paying your taxes in property tax, uh, which, is a, which is a tax on uh, property that you own? Are you paying it in income tax, which is where you pay a percentage of your income to uh, the government and then they provide services? So. Um, usually local government, state governments specify the kinds of taxes that they're going to impose. Uh, the most common in the state of Ohio are income tax, uh, property tax, and sales tax are the three most common ways in which state and local governments raise money uh, for their actions. They also must specify how revenue is spent, and you can find that information on Ohio.gov um, in the Secretary of Treasury and state websites. Um, an example of this, <clears throat> excuse me, is that the Ohio lottery generates about 4% of the funding we need for public schools in Ohio. Um, there are other pieces as well that go into funding public schools for Ohio, generally tax dollars, but there are other pieces that go into funding that as well. So um, they also establish independent agencies, boards, and commissions. Now I know this one sort of sounds boring, um, but these are, the, these are the types of things that give us regulations for employment, for example. Um, so the, the laws that we were discussing before break, 16 and 17 year olds are not allowed to work past 11 p.m. on school nights or midnight on the weekends. You can't work more than 40 hours uh, for the most part, et cetera, et cetera. Those types of things uh, that make sure everything sort of stays um, fair for everybody and nobody's being asked to do more than they should, particularly or you are if it, uh, of a young age. Uh, agencies would also be like the Ohio State Troopers, which are tasked with enforcing the state's driving laws on, uh, on interstates. A couple other examples here would be like public utility commissions, uh, water and electric, things like that. Also the state boards of education, which help determine what our educational policies are, what you are required to learn, um, and make those decisions as far as education goes. They also create basic laws. Um, so the, the big thing to keep in mind here is that federal law always supersedes state law, but state law always supersedes local law. So if there is a state law that contradicts your local law, state law is king and it will win. So um, just keep in mind that state laws are supreme over local laws when those types of things are, happen. Um, but one of the big things here is state constitutions can't class with the United States Constitution. Um, 
But there are some exceptions. Now, prior to the Obergefell decision in 2015, same-sex marriage was a state-by-state -state issue until it was ruled that it was a federal issue, which nullified and uh, struck down every same-sex marriage law in every state. Um, so that is one example of the federal government, um, you know, was sort of exercising their supremacy over the state constitutions. Um, on, the, on the flip side of that, we have marijuana laws currently where the federal government doesn't recognize marijuana in any legal aspect at all, but certain states have, uh, including Ohio for medical purposes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those exceptions where states are doing things uh, that the federal government have deemed illegal still exist, and they, they are a thing, um, but they're few and far between. So what are some characteristics of Ohio's constitution? Well, we have a Bill of Rights, and it contains um, mo mostly those things. Yeah, sorry for the interruption there. Uh, Mr. Pennington better, better get on the phone. But uh, all state constitutions, uh, including the Ohio Constitution, contain what's called a Bill of Rights. It functions the very same way that our, ten, our first 10 amendments of the United States Constitution do. They include mostly the same things. Um, now some of you may be asking, why? Why do it again? Like the federal government already has these protections. Why do we need to do it again? And it's very simple. If the federal government were to change their mind at some point, you could still enforce certain pieces of the state constitution um, if the federal government were to um, somehow fall uh, in, in an extreme circumstance, then we would fall back on our state constitutions, which give us those powers again. So it's sort of a safeguard. It's a double protection of those rights. State constitutions also cover additional protections not covered in the federal constitution. And this can include things outside of the scope of the federal government as well. Like, what is the drinking age in Ohio? We all know it's 21, with the exception of what we've talked about in class. And that is not a federal law, and the federal government can't make that law. So whatever Ohio says in that aspect is what is true. So it, it does cover additional things here. Uh, another example is the right to join a union. In Ohio, everybody has the right to join a union. Ohio is not currently a right-to-work state, uh, which means you could be forced to join a union for certain employers, uh, but you always have the right to join a union if you so choose. So how long are state constitutions? Well, when we compare them to the United States Constitution, our Ohio Constitution is almost five times longer. Uh, and the reason for that is pretty simple. The US Constitution is very, very limited in power, as we know from the 10th Amendment. Any power the federal government didn't take or can't take goes to state government. So state constitutions are just gonna be longer because they have a wider scope of power for the most part. Uh, and they tend to be more detailed. And some long constitutions have various details uh, covering very unusual circumstances of state life. Uh, for Ohio, we have specific things that outline provisions for the Great Lakes. Um, we also have things that outline travel on the Ohio River, which despite the misleading name, is totally and completely owned by the state of Kentucky. Uh, Ohio owns no part of the Ohio River, ironically. Um, but we are allowed to do certain business on that river with the permission of the state of Kentucky, so we have provisions in that as well. Another example is the Ohio State, the Ohio Constitution. It states that you have the right to alter, reform, or abolish our entire government. So if they do something we don't like, uh, we Ohioans, we re reserve the right and have the ability to essentially throw our government away and start from scratch. Very much like what happened when we threw away the Articles of Confederation and moved to the Constitution we have now only we'd follow a little bit more legal channels rather than sort of asking for forgiveness um, later. So, so why? Um, and, and it has to do with the individuality of each state. Uh, there are certain groups in each state, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, have certain provisions that they would like to have. Um, so one of those things, for example, is that uh, Ohio has pieces of, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, their constitution that essentially outline certain things for corporations and individuals. So those things um, are, are pretty important. Um, and examples would be things like protects against their livelihood by changing a vote of legislature. So if all of a sudden a legislature says, hey, this law sucks, we're not gonna use it anymore, this, this protection here would prevent them from uh, being fired, for example. So uh, this is going to end video one. Video two is going to be about amendments, criticism, 
and reform. So uh, stay with me here, guys.